Hello and welcome to another video of this week on the Rest of Saga Classic Car YouTube Restoration Channel. And this week we're talking about the 1969 MGB GT and how you can use one of these cars as a daily driver. So let's get started up, move it outside, take it for a drive and we'll talk about it then. So, as with any classic car, before taking it out for a decent run, um, now this car has been sitting for a week, what I'm going to do is check the fluids and do a few quick checks just before taking it out. Just looking at the, the water level in the radiator, looks absolutely fine. Plenty of fluid covering the fins in the radiator, make sure that's back on tight. And check the oil in the dipstick, which is maybe a bit on the low side. So I'm just going to top that up here quickly before going out for a run. This is the oil I use here. Um, main reason for using this is because it's readily available from my local motor factors. So let's pop some on in there. And there we are, slightly above the mark, but that should settle once we start running. So we'll just quickly close the bonnet and get the car started. Hopefully it starts at the first go. Choke out a little bit. Pump, fuel pump is primed. So I think one of the most important considerations when thinking about whether using a classic car daily is whether it'll keep up with modern traffic. So you're looking at drivability. Horsepower wise, the MG may not have a huge number of horsepower compared to modern cars, but it is a 1.8 cylinder engine. Sorry, 1.8 cc engine, four cylinders. And I think it keeps up very well with modern traffic and can cruise at motorway speeds very happily. I live in the UK here. So their national speed limit is 70 miles an hour or in and around 120 kilometers per hour. And while this car doesn't have overdrive, that is attainable. With overdrive, it is definitely attainable with more comfort. Unfortunately, this one doesn't have overdrive. So if you were thinking of using yours daily, I would recommend getting a car with the overdrive fitted, which definitely makes third and fourth a wee bit longer and more usable. In terms of fuel economy, I got around 30 miles to the gallon, which by today's standards is probably not that wonderful. But if you live fairly close to, say, your regular work, I think that's plenty and it would do you very well and would hopefully not bankrupt you too much. Other things to think about drivability is how easy it is to live with inside. Now, Excuse my clapped seat, I'm sure you all know that that's on the jobs list to do, but something to think about is interior space. Now, you happily get two adults in here with a good degree of comfort. The driving position is very comfortable. You sit low in the car and the visibility is great, both through the side windows but also front and back, that enormous rear window. If you're needing to drive your, class, your car daily and take more than one passenger, the MGB is probably not the vehicle for you because realistically, that back seat is largely decorative. Um, interior fit and finish is great. Oops, sorry, interior fit and finish is great. Um, some cars have a radio fitted here, and it's not that the car is so loud that you won't hear it. Um, very effective heating, 
and wipers, certainly compared to other classics that I have, such as the Land Rover or the Morris Minor. Four speed gearbox, as said here, and the handbrake there. Um, easy to read instruments, also lit at night. Um, so, all very usable inside and comfortable for daily use. Let's have a wee look and think about running costs and maintenance. Here we are under the bonnet again. So running costs and maintenance, around 30 miles to the gallon, as I said, um, petrol. I run this car in super unleaded really to keep everything as well maintained as possible because super unleaded I find has better additives in it. Running costs, servicing, if you probably go by the service schedule, but you're looking at plugs, oil, air filters, none of which are particularly expensive and all available from most good motor factors. Uses 20-50 mineral oil, which is very easily attainable because it's also shared with Morris Miners and Minis, which are your two other very common classic cars. To make this more usable, I fitted with electronic ignition, which sits hidden inside the distributor so it doesn't um, encroach on the originality. This car also has an alternator. Um, some of the earlier cars have a dynamo, I think, but you need to double check that. That certainly allows for the batteries to be charged more easily. This car is fitted with a single 12 volt rather than the original twin 6 volts, which also makes replacement both cheaper and easier to do rather than wiring up two batteries separately. Twin carburetors, once they're set up, as long as you maintain them with uh, dash pot oil and check the mixture every time you're servicing it. As with most classic cars, as long as they're maintained correctly and with good quality parts, they should not be too expensive or cost you a fortune to run. I service this car every year because I don't do a massive mileage. I do try and take it to work as often as I can, but the nature of my job means I can't always use a classic car because I do have to drive quite a significant distance on occasion. Looking on the outside of the car then, other things to think of, tyres. Now these tyres here I think are maybe a little lower profile, so that's the height of the tyre wall, than would have been originally fitted. So not exactly ideal, but they are not expensive. I think the previous owner told me that these were about £40 a corner, so £160 for four tyres plus your spare. Knock-on wheels, very easy to replace, but I suppose if you're using it daily you might not want the wire wheels just because they're more difficult to clean and look after. Other things to think of are replaceable. Wiper blades, you have washer fluid, as well, all very easily accessible. This car at Eisen, Eisenhoven has a heated rear window, which is great in the winter if you're trying to keep it cleared. Also thinking about using it in the winter, you have opening side and windows, and even your little quarter lights there, so you can get good ventilation through to get your windows cleared in the, the winter, and in the summer, it'll also keep you nice and cool. Let's have a wee look in the boot and under the floor and see what you, you've got to keep you going along the road. So if you're using a car daily, you're going to have to think about luggage space. And you have to admit that the MG BGT boot is certainly very generous. And given what I said earlier about the back seam not being particularly usable, you can put these latches round and fold the, flat, the back seat flatter. Now it does go a wee bit more flat than that and you can get a lar larger parcel in there, even with the sloped tailgate down. Off to the sides, you have plenty of room for storage, so I keep my leather hammer and my uh, wheel nut saver in there, and also keep a jack in there and some sort of rags and so on. Underneath the boot floor is where the spare is kept. If you just turn this catch and this catch and lift this up, full-size spare wheel which you don't certainly don't get on too many modern cars and actually some extra storage space in there so if you really wanted those side pockets you could pop your wheel changing spares down in the side right that's a knock on it close there we go fasten that up later just around the back reminding me fuel tank sits in here cost me about 30 or 40 pounds to fill this vehicle um, so good size fuel tank and I get about three 350 miles of range ish 
um, depending obviously on your fuel economy and how you're driving. Also around the back, your lumps. Now some classic cars have quite small rear lumps. Comparatively, your indicators are reasonably sized in the MG. You have twin reversing lights, so that's good. Um, and your lamps around the front are certainly more than capable of lighting the road, even on the darkest of winter nights. Also good visibility from your indicators and side lights on the side. So you don't need to worry so much about other drivers as you would maybe in the likes of the Mars Minor that has trafficators halfway up the side of the vehicle. Thinking as you come into the winter then, you're going to want to rust proof your daily driver. Very easy to access the underneath here and keep it all under check, jack it up and very easy, usable to work on. And if you're the sort of person who does your own work in the car like me, MGB GT is certainly a good one to consider. And there you have it, a quick look at how you can use an MGB GT as a classic car daily driving every day, even throughout the winter, as I hope to put some more miles on this car myself. So if you've enjoyed this video, hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, I reply to all of my comments, and I'll catch you again next week with another video on at least one of my classic cars. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you again.